Hello again. I'm happy to present the second paper in our March meeting paper series presented today. Our next spe speaker is Grace Anise Ali. Grace's research and teaching practice centers on curatorial activism, socially engaged art practices, and contemporary art of the Caribbean and its diaspora, with a focus on her homeland, Guyana. She is assistant professor and provost fellow in the Department of Art and Public Policy at the Tisch School of the, of the Arts in New York University. She serves as the curator at large for the Caribbean Cultural Center, African Diaspora Institute in New York. Grace has received many fellowships, including NYU Provost Faculty Fellowship, Paul Mellon, Paul Mellon Center for Studies in British Art Grant, Andy Warhol Foundation for the Visual Art Creatorial Fellowship, Fulbright Fellowship, and the NYU Henry M. McCracken Fellowship. She is the founder and editorial director of Off Note magazine. Her recent book, Liminal Spaces, Migration and Women of the Guyanese Diaspora, Open Book Publishers 2020, explores the art and migration narratives of women of Guyanese heritage. Simultaneous translation to Arabic is available in the chat box. Unfortunately, we will not be able to take questions from the audience as Grace was not able to join us today and have kindly pre-recorded his session. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and my sincere gratitude to the Sharjah Foundation for this really lovely opportunity to be part of the March meeting this year. Thank you all so much. Um, in 2019, I was privileged to be able to attend the Sharjah Biennial 14, titled Leaving the Echo Chamber. And I use the word privileged very intentionally here because I come from a region in the world, the Caribbean, specifically Guyana, where biennials are quite rare and very few. And so I wrote this essay, it's both a personal essay and a curatorial essay titled The World in Which We Find Ourselves, exploring how um, for the first time the Sharjah Biennial engaged with a formidable roster of Caribbean artists and Caribbean thinkers who explore urgent issues of global migration, displacement, and dislocation. And so I will share my screen. Um, I started the essay with this grounding question. Who does the biennial leave behind? What is the biennial's ethos of inclusion? Whenever I am able to attend the biennial, I am hyper aware of the machinery that goes into it. The money, the ecological footprint, the labor, both visible and invisible. And biennials are encounters with all sorts of privilege to attend, participate in, and engage with them as an artist, as an audience member, as a curator or an art historian, is to negotiate with few exceptions, the complexities of a massive global undertaking that attracts hundreds or thousands. I think about the lack of them in the part of the world I come from, the Caribbean. I think of who's not there, who is not represented, who is left out. What I often see is a tremendous absence of a Caribbean presence. Writing about inclusion and exclusion of biennial artists, Christian Morgner asserts, quote, the biennial's catalytic function lies in its ability to assemble and concentrate a great number of works of art from many regions and different times or cultural backgrounds in one place for a short time. So creating a diverse cosmos in that place Building on this idea, the biennial can be characterized as a world public sphere, end quote. And although the last 10 years have seen a proliferation of biennials emerging around the world, Latin America and the Caribbean remain exceptions. Two major biennials have anchored the region for the past seven decades. The Biennial de Sao Paulo, founded in 1951, holds the title as the first modern biennial in the Global South. And the Havana Biennial founded in 1984 remains committed to its early mission to elevate underrepresented artists from Latin America and the Caribbean. 
And more recently, the Kingston Biennial, formerly the Jamaica Biennial, founded in 1977, has been working to position itself as a space for internationally recognized Caribbean artists. Each biennial, adds Wartner, sets the stage for a gathering of diversity. The issue of participation is an important feature of democracy and is often debated in the context of biennials in terms of who takes part and who does not, end quote. Yet artists, curators, cultural workers, and scholars from the Caribbean are still largely left out from such assemblies, especially on the grand scale at which many biennials are commonly produced now. And when they are invited to participate in international biennials, oftentimes it is received with an indifference as they continue to battle limited funds, resources, and support for the arts from both public and private spheres within the Caribbean. In the introduction of the guidebook for the most recent Sharjah Biennial 14, Leaving the Echo Chamber, curated by Zoe Butt, Omar Khalif, and Claire Tonkunis, in three dynamic platforms, the Sharjah Art Foundation notes in its role for global artistic interventions specifically echoing its mission to, quote, act as a catalyst for collaboration and exchange within the Middle East and beyond. I was really struck by the implications of the beyond. If everyone's beyond is different, then who or what constitutes the beyond? That question was provocatively answered, complicated, troubled, in the SB14 platform, Look For Me All Around You, curated by Claire Tom Coons. It's set out to foster international artistic exchange and dialogue, tapping Tom Coons as one of its curators for SB14 and the adjoining public programs for the March meeting during its opening week, a goal that resulted in significant engagement with a formidable roster of Caribbean artists, curators, scholars, and activists. And overall, more than 80 artists were invited to participate in SB14 um, across all three of its platforms. Significantly, of the 27 newly commissioned works by Tom Coons, a strong cohort of artists had roots in the Caribbean and the Americas. And they included, I'm showing two of them on the screen for you. They included Alora and Calzadilla of Puerto Rico, Cuba, and the United States, Aline Bayana of Brazil, shown here on the screen, Christopher Coger of Trinidad and Tobago, Alia Farid of Puerto Rico, and Kuwait, Laura Lima of Brazil, Ulrich Lopez of Puerto Rico. Carlos Martiel of Cuba, seen here on the right, and Suchitra Matai of Guyana and the United States. Tom Coons' own roots in the French Caribbean no doubt informs her worldview, particularly for SB14, where she positioned artists of the Gulf in conversation with those of the Caribbean. The Guadalupe-born curator and scholar of performance who works in Sutu, has shaped an impressive global curatorial practice with a staunch commitment to centering the work of artists from the Caribbean and the African diasporas. Her curatorial statement for Look For Me All Around You populated throughout with the language of, quote, migrant, fugitive, dispossessive, displacement, transient, exploitation, othered. Indeed, articulated a need that the platform acknowledge the presence of people in histories that often only register in fleeting or immaterial forms, end quote. A constant refrain echoing in many reviews and critiques of SB14 labeled artists in Look For Me All Around You as, quote, a new set of voices. To the contrary, these were not new artists or new voices, if anything, Tom Kuhn's diligent selection and curatorial approach proved that although Caribbean artists have been historically omitted from master narratives of art, they are impossible to ignore. 
What Caribbean artists bring to their exchange with the UAE and the globalized world at large in their transgressing of geographies, boundaries, and cultures is a Caribbean diasporic consciousness, a reality uniquely shaped by their experiences living in post-colonial and post-independent spaces, as well as their transnational communities. They are reluctantly or willingly, quote, transnational wanderers, both blessed and cursed with mobility. In addition to the Caribbean artist's participation in the exhibition, there was an equally considerable Caribbean presence in the adjoining March meeting. Over the two days of public programs dedicated to look for me all around you, Tonkun set the stage for SB 14 as indeed a world public sphere. In line with the curatorial pedagogy that public programs, performance, and social participation are essential to the artistic exchange and dialogue. Tonkun's embedded within those two days a robust series of events, installations, performances, processionals, talks, site activations, presence, and live stream productions that continue to thread the connections between the Caribbean and the Middle East. And in doing so, the Look For Me All Around You platform was activated as a space to catalyze South-South dialogues. Even whilst the global world descends on them en masse, biennials ought to be, at their core, local events. As Monica Schwesig writes, the location of the biennial quotes relates not just to the event, but also to the geographies it helps to imagine and render, end quote. Of the utmost responsibility of biennial artists, curators, and audiences alike is acknowledging that there must be an investment of time, research, work, labor, and care towards understanding the site of the biennial in all of its complexities, contradictions, and nuances. In tandem, over the course of its two days of public programs, the Look For Me All Around You platform enlisted its audience to activate various sites 100 kilometers beyond the parameters of Central Sharjah, notably a decommissioned kindergarten school and an ice factory in Kalba, as well as the site of an abandoned airplane in the Emirate of Um al Kuwain. One public program uh, titled Eminent Movement, held on the late morning of March 8th, 2019, gathered a crowded audience at the Fen Cafe in Kalba, which overlooks the Gulf of Oman. We listened to sobering reflections on migration and displacement within Latin America and the Caribbean. From the voices of two scholars who live there, Yaramar Bonilla of Puerto Rico and Fabian Villegas of Mexico and the Dominican Republic. And standing on Calba's shoreline, Villegas invoked Guyanese political activist, Walter Rodney, and his seminal text, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. He emphasized the ways in which the effects of European colonialism can be seen in our contemporary crises of migration and displacement in the global South. And with the confluence of the Arabian Sea and the Indian Ocean extending behind him, a reminder of the passages of the enslaved, the indentured, and the refugee Villegas asked us to sit with these questions on the screen. And these repeated questions by Villegas reflected the kind of call and response between the Americas and the Emirates, elucidated in the curatorial statement of Look For Me All Around You. The Caribbean voices of Bonilla and Villegas stood as powerful juxtapositions between the local and the global a visceral pairing of language and geography. And above all, a reminder that through an assemblage of shorelines, seas, and oceans, the lands of Arabia and the archipelagos of the Caribbean are interconnected via their histories of migration, displacement, and labor. 
The curatorial statement for Look For Me All Around You notes that the participating artists created, quote, an open platform of migrant images in a fraught moment when borders and beliefs are under constant negotiation and in response to unprecedented human and material displacement, end quote. For artists from the Caribbean and Latin America in particular, such a curatorial focus recognized and named real world concerns, the urgent situation of displacement playing out in their home countries. 40 million people from Latin America and the Caribbean have migrated from their countries of origin. In the early 1980s, this figure was under 10 million. Latin America and Caribbean people now make up 15% of the world's migrants twice as much as their share of the world's population. They are fleeing a perfect storm of economic crises, state violence, armed conflicts, poverty, environmental catastrophe, and more. And as more and more people leave their home countries, the UAE offers a glimpse into the inverse situation where migrants go and what they endure once they get there. Making up close to an 8 million strong workforce, migrants in the UAE who are primarily from India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Egypt, and the Philippines, account for almost 90% of the country's population, the highest such figure in the world. The men and women of this non-citizen majority work largely on temporary unemployment contracts in a range of white collar, blue collar and service industry jobs. This multiracial archipelago of global migrants laboring at the limits of citizenship registered in the work of several of the Caribbean artists in Look For Me All Around You. For example, for Pataki 1921 by Ulrich Lopez, he, Ehrlich Lopez, I'm sorry, deployed dancers from various migrant backgrounds to perform Afro-Caribbean syncretic traditions in his restaging of the classical ballet held to celebrate the 1966 Chess Olympics in Cuba. Suchitra Matai collected saris worn by Indian women in India, Sharjah, and throughout the Caribbean to weave the large scale tapestry in perfect isometry, a work that speaks to the system of Indian indentured servitude, the Kalapani, meaning dark waters in Hindi, crossings of the Atlantic that shaped the Indian diaspora. Aliyah Farid captured the 600 year old theatrical celebration of the Fisherman's New Year in a fishing village on the Iranian island of Kisham in the Persian Gulf as a setting for At the Time of the Ebb. The film's imagery conjures shared histories of international trade and oil economies between the Caribbean and the Gulf. And in Christopher Cogier's film, all around us elsewhere is our beginnings and endings. Scenes of a temporary grid constructed in the desert continue to flash throughout the film's eight minutes as the image of the empty, empty landscape loops and as the protagonists disappear and reappear in the frame, Cogier returns us to the twin ideas of transience and displacement set out in Look For Me All Around You. Collectively, these commissioned works for SB14 and the Look For Me All Around You platform conveyed experiences of loss, displacement, and longing to connect across borders both real and imagined. In their gaze on each other, the UAE and the Caribbean could be seen as their own kind of beyond, both part of the global south. One never colonized, the other still reeling from centuries of colonial violence. As a final point, the Sharjah Biennial audience, like most international biennial audiences, is often there to look into the artist's worlds. However, what the Look For Me All Around You platform signaled is an invitation to go beyond only looking into the artist's world and instead 
to engage with the artist's awareness of the world in which he or she finds oneself. And to conclude in the words of Christopher Cogier, as Caribbean people move around the world, it calls into question, what is the value of our awareness of those worlds as opposed to our bodies? I'm looking at your world from my point of view. You are entering into my awareness and the question becomes, do you want to contend with that awareness? Thank you all so much for listening and thank you again, Sharjah Foundation.